Good morning, this is Professor Shannon Gracie back again. Today we're going to be covering the library of functions and going over how to graph piecewise defined functions. We are working out of the pre-calculus enhanced with graphing utilities text by Sullivan and Sullivan. And whenever you are ready, go ahead and warm it on up. All right, let's see how you did. Average rate of change from negative 1 to 2 of this function will be, if you recall, this is just a slope. So the change in y over the change in x will be equal to f at 2 minus f at negative 1 divided by 2 minus negative 1. Okay, so for that we will have, let's see what f at 2 is. If we plug in 2 into our function there, we will get 2 to the 4th minus 3, so that's f at 2, and then minus f at 1 will be, or f at negative 1 will be negative 1 to the 4th minus 3. And that'll be all over 2 minus a negative 1 is 3. So just so you can follow along, f at 2 is this, and f at negative 1 is this one here. Okay, moving right along, we have 2 to the 4th is 16. 16 minus 3 is 13 minus, so negative 1 to the 4th is positive 1. Positive 1 minus 3 is negative 2 all over 3. So we will get 13 minus negative 2 is 15 all over 3, which is 5. So the average rate of change is 5. How'd you do? Awesome. Okay, now next up, find an equation of the secant line containing the x-coordinates negative 1 and 2. Well, they're trying to be tri tricky here. Remember, the slope of the secant line is the average rate of change between the um, x-inputs of negative 1 and 2. So we already have the slope. So the slope of the secant line is equal to the average rate of change from negative 1 to 2, which we found was 5. So using our y minus y1 is the slope of our secant line times x minus x1. We will have y minus, so you pick which ordered pair you want to use. So up here, we had an output of, when we plugged in 2, we got an output of 13. And when we plugged in negative 1, we got an output of negative 2. So it just depends on which point you want to use. I'll use the negative 1, negative 2. So f of negative 1 was equal to negative 2. So we end up getting the ordered pair of negative 1 comma negative 2. That was from above. So my y1 will be negative 2. The slope of the secant line is 5. And my x1 will be negative 1. And cleaning it up a little bit, we get y plus 2 is equal to 5 times x plus 1. Okay, so far? And I left, I left that in point slope form of the line. 
Okay, so now on to the library of functions. We're going to be going through this kind of quickly. You've, you've had uh, most of these graphs before, but you just might need a little help remembering them. So this looks a little odd, f of x equals b. b is a constant. So we'll just leave it general so that um, you could apply this to any constant function. So let's determine if the function is even odd or neither. So remember to figure that out. We plug in f at negative x. Well, there's no x to plug in there, so you're just going to get b, right? Well, that's equal to our original function, f at x, right? So that means that f is even. and symmetric with respect to the good y-axis. OK, so let's determine the intercepts. So for the x-intercept, Remember, you set f at x equal to 0 and solve. Well, there's no solution for that unless b was equal to 0. So this one, I'll just write that in. No solution unless b is 0. So our y-intercept, if we evaluate the function at x is 0, we still just get b. So that means the y-intercept is y equals b, or in the form of an ordered pair, you would have 0 comma b. So if we go ahead and graph this, we've got, let's just call this, do this in black. So here's our f at x. We go to plus or minus 10 on each axis. We will have... And let's just suppose that um, for, for this case, we'll say that this is b right here. So we would have our graph would end up being here. Here's our intercept. And you're done. You've got a horizontal line as the graph. So properties, in summary, what did we find out? We found out that the domain is the set of real numbers. The range is the set consisting of a single number, b. The y-intercept of the graph is b. And if you do that as an ordered pair, you'd be at 0b. The graph is a good, it's a horizontal line. The function is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, and the function is even. All right? OK, on to the next one. Consider the function f at x equals x. So same deal. De determine whether it's even, odd, or neither. We're basically going to do the same thing for all of our library of functions. So if you feel very confident, please pause the movie, go on and do these yourself, and then just ch check your work by playing the movie. So here we go. If I plug in negative x for x, I end up getting this result. So f at negative x equals negative x, which equals to negative f at x. So f is odd, and f is symmetric with respect to the origin. Okay, 
determine the intercepts. So our x-intercept we will have setting f at x equal to 0 and solving. It's pretty easy. That just gives us x is 0. So for the x-intercept, x is 0 or the ordered pair 0, 0. The y-intercept, you could probably already guessed, but if you evaluate the function at x is 0, you get this. So your y-intercept would be 0 or the ordered pair 0, 0. So graphing by hand. We have our intercept here is at 0, 0. So y is equal to x. So it's going to look something like this. OK? All right, so the domain and range are the set of real numbers. The x-intercept of the graph is 0. The y-intercept is 0. The graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. The function is odd. And the function is increasing on the interval minus infinity to infinity. So as we move from left to right, the graph is going upwards. OK, next up, f at x is equal to x squared. So let's do our work for even testing if it's even or odd. So if we plug in negative x, we get negative x squared, which is x squared, which is the original function f. So f is even, and f is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. determining intercepts. So for our x-intercept, letting the function value be 0 and solving, if you were to square root both sides, you would get plus or minus 0 is x, which gives you 0 is x. So the x-intercept is at x is 0, or the ordered pair 0, 0. The y-intercept, evaluating our function when x is 0, gives us 0 squared, which is 0. So our intercept is at y is 0, or the ordered pair, 0, 0. Graphing by hand, we have Our intercept is at 0, 0, so we have that one ordered pair, so we can make a little chart if you'd like. You have symmetry with respect to the y-axis, so we already have the ordered pair 0, 0. Let's go ahead and do negative 2. f at negative 2 is equal to negative 2 squared, which is 4, so we'll get the ordered pair negative 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. By symmetry, we know that we'll have another ordered pair at 2, 4. So let's now do x is, I don't know, how about negative 1? So f at negative 1 is negative 1 squared, which is 1. So negative 1, 1, whoops. We have an order pair, and by symmetry, we'll have one at 1, 1.
you can do the same thing. You'll find that there's ordered pairs at plus or minus 3 comma 9. And if we make our graph, it's going to look, oh, that's not very good on that side. It'll look something like that. Okay, so properties of f at x equal to x squared. The domain is the set of real numbers. The range is the set of positive real numbers. You know, your author just says positive real numbers. I'm going to add in and 0. 0 is neither positive nor negative. So um, I'm going to put that in there. The x-intercept of the graph of f at x equals x squared is 0, and the y-intercept was also 0. The graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. The function is even. And the function is, so as we look at our graph, as we go from minus infinity to zero, do you see that the function values, the y values, are decreasing? So the function is decreasing on the interval from minus infinity to zero and increasing on the interval from zero to infinity. Okay, so now f of x equals x cubed. So plugging in negative x So do you see that's equal to negative f at x? So f is odd and the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. Intercepts, setting our function value equal to zero will find us our x-intercept. So if you were to evaluate the cube root of both sides, you would get 0 is x. So the intercept is x is 0 or the ordered pair 0, 0. Our y-intercept will be the same, but just so you see the process, we're evaluating the function at x equal to 0. So 0 cubed is 0. So the intercept is at y is 0 or the ordered pair, 0, 0. OK. So if we graph a few ordered pairs, again, we can use symmetry. So with symmetry, when the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin, if the ordered pair x, y is on the graph, the ordered pair negative x, negative y is on the graph. So let's see what we'd get. So when x is, we already know we have 0, 0, right? So when x is, let's say, negative 2, f at negative 2 is going to be negative 2 cubed, which is negative 8. So negative 2 and then negative 8 is on the graph. So therefore, positive 2 comma 8 is on the graph by symmetry. And then doing the same for negative 1. f at negative 1 is negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1 is on the graph. So positive 1, positive 1 will also be on the graph by symmetry. Let 
And so it'll look something like this. Okay? So properties of f at x equal to x cubed. The domain and range are the set of real numbers. The x-intercept of the graph is 0. The y-intercept is 0. The graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. The function is odd. The function is always increasing. So increasing on the interval from minus infinity to infinity. As you see, as we move from left to right, the y values are going up. OK, so consider the function f at x is the square root of x. So if I Well, this one is a little bit, you know, odd. You could only plug in, let's go from this from a different direction. Because if we do our regular test, we're not dealing with the imaginary numbers. So we'll come back and we'll answer this question last. Um, let's go ahead and determine the intercepts. So for our x-intercept, if I um, set the function value equal to 0 and solve, I would have, so 0 would be x. So the x-intercept is at 0 or the ordered pair 0, 0. And then the y-intercept, we would evaluate the function at x is 0. And the square root of 0 is 0. So the intercept is at y equals 0 or the order pair 0, 0. So we have x and f at x. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Here's our intercept right here. Remember that the when you're evaluating a square root, you want to see if you have a perfect square. So f at x is equal to the square root of x. So if I plug in x is 9, f at 9 is the square root of 9, which is good, 3, because 3 squared is 9. So we have the ordered pair 9, 1, 2, 3. And then let's do x is 4. f at 4 is the square root of 4, which is? Awesome, 2, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, and then 1. f at 1 is the square root of 1, which is 1, so we have an ordered pair at 1, 1. Now, we're not going to have any um, negative inputs for the graph here, so if we draw our graph, it looks something like this. So here, from our graph, do you see... We do not have symmetry with respect to the y-axis or with respect to the good origin. So I'm going to just say f is neither odd nor even, nor even. No, no symmetry. And I'm just going to say C graph below. All right, so the properties, the domain and range are the set of positive real numbers. And I'm also going to say and 0. The x-intercept is 0. The y-intercept is 0. The function is neither odd nor even. The function is increasing. <coughs> Excuse me.
on the interval from 0 to infinity. And the function has an absolute minimum. of 0 at x equals 0. That's where our graph starts. OK. Now we get into the cube root of x. So here we go. f at negative x is equal to the cube root of negative x, which is equal to the cube root of negative 1 times the cube root of x which gives us negative t cube root of x, which of course is equal to negative f at x. So f is odd, and the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. OK, determine the intercepts. So x-intercept, set the function value equal to 0, and solve. So if I cube both sides, I would get 0 equals x. So the intercept is at x equals 0, or the ordered pair 0, 0. The y-intercept. We evaluate the function at x is 0, so we'd have the cube root of 0, which is 0. So the y-intercept will be at y is 0, or the ordered pair 0, 0. So graphing by hand, we'll have So again, we'll use symmetry. We know we have an ordered pair at 0, 0. If we go over here, x and f of x equals the cube root of x, we would have So let's try some perfect cubes, plugging, putting those in for x. So if x is negative 8, f at negative 8 is the cube root of negative 8, which is negative 2, because negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So negative 8, negative 2. So since the ordered pair negative 8, negative 2 is on the graph, and we have an odd graph, or symmetry with respect to the origin, positive 8, positive 2 is also on the graph. All right, so now let's plug in negative 1. f at negative 1 is the cube root of negative 1, which is negative 1. So the ordered pair negative 1, negative 1 is on the graph, leads us to positive 1, positive 1 being on the graph. So we get something like this. All right, so properties. The domain and range are the set of real numbers. The x-intercept of the graph is 0, and the y-intercept is 0. The graph is symmetric with respect to the, good, origin. The function is odd. The function is, let's see what's happening as far as increasing or decreasing. So as I move from left to right, do you see I'm going up? Good. So the function is increasing over its domain, which is minus infinity to infinity. And the function does not have any local minimum or local maximum.
Okay, now f at x equal to 1 over x. So evaluating f at negative x, we would get 1 over negative x, which is negative 1 over x. Remember, you can apply that negative to the numerator, the denominator, or to the side of the fraction. So this is equal to negative f at x. So f is odd in the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. Okay, so determine the intercepts. So here, little tricky. If you set the function value equal to 0 and solve, you would say, oh, 0 is the numerator, but there's no solution to that. So there is no x-intercept. So for the y-intercept, you would evaluate the function at x is 0, which would give you 1 over 0, right? which is undefined, so there is no y-intercept either. Okay, so graphing by hand. We do know that the function is odd, so that will help with graphing. Okay, so x, f at x is equal to 1 over x. So we'll do a few numbers here. I'll go on the positive side this time. So let's start with x is a half. Do you see that f at 1 half would be equal to 1 divided by a half, which is 2? So we have the ordered pair 1 half, 2, on the graph. So since it's odd, we're going to have the ordered pair negative half, negative 2. Now going to 1. So f at 1 is 1 over 1, which is 1. So 1, 1 is on the graph, which means negative 1, negative 1 is also on the graph. Now let's go to um, I don't know, let's go to 2. f at 2 is 1 over 2, oops, which is a half. <laughs> so 1, 2, comma, a half. So negative 2, negative a half will be on the graph. So it'll look something like this. It's going to have what's called a horizontal asymptote at y is 0 and a vertical asymptote at x is 0. Okay. Now let's look at uh, the behavior of the graph. There's a break in the graph at x is 0. So from minus infinity to 0, do you see our graph is decreasing? And look at what's happening from 0 to infinity. It's also decreasing behavior even though the y values are all positive. So the domain and range are the set of all non-zero real numbers. The graph of f at x equals 1 over x has no intercepts. The graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. So that makes the graph, or the function, odd. And the function is decreasing on the interval from minus infinity to 0, and also decreasing on 0 to infinity. We have to break it up because the 0 is not part of the domain. That's why we had couldn't go from minus infinity to infinity. All right, trucking right along. We've got. 
the absolute value function. So let's check it out. f at negative x is equal to the absolute value of negative x, which is equivalent to the absolute value of negative 1 times the absolute value of x. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So 1 times absolute x, which is absolute x, which is what we started with for our function. So let's see. f is even. And the graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. OK, determine the intercepts. So for our x-intercept, if I set our function value equal to 0 and solve, the only solution for that would be x is 0. So the intercept is at x is 0 or the ordered pair 0, 0. y-intercept, evaluate the function at x is 0. And we get 0. So y is 0 is the intercept or the ordered pair 0, 0. So graphing by hand. We will have zero zero is the intercept, and making a little chart. Well, we'll use the fact that we have symmetry. So if I plug in one for x, f at one is absolute 1, which is 1. So we have the ordered pair 1, 1, which means we'll have the ordered pair negative 1, 1 by symmetry. If x is, let's just do 4, f at 4 is absolute value of 4, which is 4. So we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we'll get the same over here by symmetry. So the graph looks like this. Like a V. All righty. So properties. The domain is the set of real numbers. The range of F is going to be the set from 0 inclusive to infinity, which we've written before is the set of positive real numbers and 0. The x-intercept is 0. The y-intercept is 0. The graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. The function is even. The function, let's see what it's doing. So do you see there's a change right at x is 0 in whether it's increasing or decreasing? So the graph is going down as we move from left to right from minus infinity to 0. And then it goes up as we move from left to right, from 0 to infinity. So the function is decreasing on the interval from minus infinity to 0 and increasing on the interval from 0 to infinity. The function has an absolute minimum. of 0 at x equals 0. So as you see, 
the lowest value is at x is 0, and that value is 0. Okay? All right. Here we go. This one, this function is called the greatest integer function. So what it means is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So it can be a little tricky to graph, um, especially the negatives, but that's okay. So again, with this one, we're going to go and we're going to do the picture of the graph before we ascertain if, it, if it's even odd or neither and if there is any symmetry. So here we go. Again, with the intercepts, we're also, gonna, we're also going to uh, look at that later. So here we are. So x and then f of x equals, by the way, you also will see this, like, with this notation. That means the, that means the integer x. I think the calculus book we'll be using it has this other notation. So if we plug in, let's do a few different values. If we plug in negative 2, f at negative 2 is the greatest integer less than or equal to negative 2. So that's just going to be negative 2. But if we go to like negative 3 halves, and we figure out f at negative 3 halves, right, what is the greatest integer that we've attained? Have we reached negative 1 yet? No, we have not. The greatest integer that this one has attained is negative 2. So what will happen is they're pretty easy to graph once you get the first one, the first little interval. This is also called a, let's do fives for this one. This is also called the um, a stepwise function. So here, do you see right at negative 2, we got an output of negative 2. So this will be negative 1, negative 2, and then negative 1, negative 2. So we have an ordered pair here. We also got an ordered pair at negative 3 halves, negative 2. So this is 1 half, 2 halves, 3 at negative 3 halves, negative 2. But what's going to happen at negative 1? f at negative 1 will be the greatest integer attained that's less than or equal to negative 1, which will just be negative 1. So this is going to go right up next to, right up to negative 1. So we'll have an open circle at negative 1, negative 2. And then we'll have a filled in circle at negative 1, negative 1. And that's how our steps will go. So at negative 1 half, the greatest integer attained will be good, negative 1. So you'd have an ordered pair at negative 1 half, negative 1, and then an open circle at 0. So you end up getting this stepwise, these steps on the graph. So now if I go to 0, f at 0 is the greatest integer less than or equal to 0, which is 0. And that's going to go until you hit 1. Let me get that lower. And so that'll be this interval. So it continues in this, in this manner. And that's why they seem like little steps, right? So that's what, that's what happens on this, this function here, this greatest integer function.
Okay, so let's take a look at this. Is this function even? Do we have symmetry with respect to the y-axis? Good, we do not. If you folded this at the y-axis, it wouldn't fold on top of itself. What about symmetry with respect to the origin? So if the ordered pair, so if, as you see, the ordered pair, um, which ordered pair is on the graph? So the ordered pair 1, 1 is on the graph. Is the ordered pair negative 1, negative 1 on the graph? It looks like it, but let's see. Let's take a look at, I'm a little worried about those endpoints. I don't think that we're going to have symmetry because of those open endpoints. So with that, um, let's take a look at the, um, let's take a look at this one. So I'm looking at the ordered pair. There's an open circle at 1, 0. So let's take a look at negative 1, 0. Do you see there's, is there an ordered pair at negative, an open circle at negative 1, 0? No. And if you kind of thought about rotating this graph, do you see the open circles and the closed circles would switch position? So this one, I think we, it's safe to say that it is neither, so F is neither odd nor even. even and um, no symmetry so intercepts so the the y-intercept we already found the y-intercept is at when we evaluated f at zero we got zero so it's at y equals zero or the ordered pair is zero zero the x-intercept is a little harder because do you see there's there's infinitely many numbers where y is equal to zero. So if you look right here, basically right here, you know, at one zero there's a, an x-intercept at you know point zero 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 one comma zero there's an intercept so you have to do there's like a whole interval um, of intercepts for for x so the way that we would you know we could write that in is going to be um, the x intercepts lie on that interval from zero so including zero to one not including one so x-intercepts lie on the interval from 0 to 1. Those, that's an interval about x. Right? So let's fill in the properties here. The domain is the set of all real numbers. The range is the set of integers. The x-intercepts lie on the interval from, as we talked about it, including 0 and not including 1. The y-intercept is 0. The function is neither odd nor even, and the function is constant on every interval of the form k comma k plus 1, where k is included and k plus 1 is not, for k an integer. So it's a kind of a strange one, but kind of cool all the same okay so here we go now we're into sketching piecewise functions so the trick to these 
is um, just sketching the part of the function that's on the, the using just the domain, so don't graph the whole line. Y is negative 3x, you only want to do it um, from minus infinity to negative 1. The other trick is, even if you have a less than, go ahead and plot that point, but do an open circle if you have a less than or a greater than. So let's see what we have for this guy. This is f at x and x. We'll just do our usual scale. So let's take a look at our, um, let's take a look here. So the first part, f at x is negative 3x if x is less than negative 1. So if I plugged in negative 1, right? We, negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, so there will be an open circle there. So negative 1 and then 1, 2, positive 3 has an open circle. So now f at negative 2, so I'll do this, this graph in blue and I'll change colors on the other. f at negative 2, plugging in negative 2 for x, I would get positive 6. And that would have a closed circle. And this is a line, so with a slope of negative 3. So if I go up 1, 2, 3, I'll go to the left one. And this is how this graph will behave going this direction. Now, if we go to this graph, this one here, 0, if x equals 1, so that's actually good. It's an ordered pair at 1, 0. at 1, 0. And then this guy will do in red 2x squared plus 1 if x is greater than 1. So again, I'm going to find that boundary point. So if I plug in x is 1, I would get 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So I'd have an ordered pair at 1, 3, and it'd be an open circle. Right? And then let's find uh, when x is 2, I would be at 5, be a closed circle. When x is 3, oh, it would be, three, that would be pretty, pretty high up there, right? So we'll just uh, draw our, our graph. It's going to increase very rapidly, okay? Something like that. Okay, so we were also asked to figure out if, um, sketch the graph, find the domain, locate any intercepts. All right, so um, the domain of the graph, remember, is left and right movement. So the domain is going to be, where is there a break? Well, actually, let's just talk about what's okay. So the blue goes from, good, from minus infinity to negative 1, right? So we would have minus infinity to negative 1, but it's not including negative 1. There's no output for negative 1. Then do you see it jumps to positive 1? So then we would have union. Positive 1 has an output of 0, so it does have an output. So even though there's a jump there, that jump tells us it's not continuous, but we can just say positive 1 inclusive because of the green um, order pair, and it goes all the way to infinity, okay? All right, so what's the next question? Um, locate any intercepts. Um, we had an x-intercept. at the ordered pair at x equal to 1 or the ordered pair 1, 0. No y-intercept. And then the range, if you look at the range, let's see what we got. Range, we're looking up, up and down. So is there a ceiling? Is, you know, is there a floor? The floor to me looks like the green ordered pair, right? That's the lowest value. So we have just that one value, 0. So I guess we could write it like this in brackets, showing that it's inclusive. 
union. Now we go from, do you see one, two, three up, and it's not including three, and then we go up to infinity. So three to infinity, non inclusive. Now let's talk about if it's continuous. Um, F is not continuous on its domain. since there is a gap from negative 1 to 1 and a jump at 1. All right, so I think we answered all of the, the questions here. Okay, so next graph. Please, um, you know, pause the movie and try this one on your own if you can. Otherwise, just follow along with me. So we'll do the picture of our graph, x and f at x, and then I'll just do our regular scale so far. Okay, so the first one we'll do in blue. It's a line, 2 minus x, and it goes it, it includes x equal negative 3, and it goes to, uh, up until x is 1, where it doesn't include 1. So let's find those two ordered pairs. So f at negative 3 would be 2 minus negative 3, which is 5. So we have a, an ordered pair of filled in dot there. And then let's find our boundary point where that will be an open circle. So if x is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. So there will be an open circle here. So we'll have this line segment right there. And then the other graph we'll do in green, the square root function. So we're doing that if x is greater than 1. So again, the boundary point would be at 1, 1 with an open circle. And, and then another point would be, let's see, f at 4 would be 2, f at 9 would be 3. So it's going to go on like that, and it keeps increasing slowly. So let's, let's uh, see what you think. So we needed to find the domain of this graph. So the domain is going to go from Good, it's going to go minus three, negative 3 inclusive, and it goes up until 1, and then union 1 to infinity. So there, there's a, the leftmost endpoint, there's a stop, the graph just stops. That's why we, we started our domain at x is negative 3. But it doesn't stop on the right side, so we go on to infinity. We have to put in that break at 1, because 1 is not, x equal 1 is not on the graph. Okay, so our next uh, step was, oh, was it intercepts or range? What did we do last time? Yeah, intercepts. So let's see. Do you see that we don't cross the x-intercept? So no x-intercept. And then y-intercept. I see the y-intercept is at 0, 2. Do you see right here? So y-intercept is at y equals 2 or 0, comma, 2. And then the range. So is there a, ce is there a ceiling on this guy? Be careful. Good. There's no ceiling. It looks like the ceiling might be up here at 5, but this guy is going to increase. If you think about the square root of 100 is 10, right? That would go above. So it's going to, the green graph is going to keep increasing. So there's no ceiling. Is there a floor? 
yes, there's a 4 at y is 1. Do we include y as 1? No, it's not on the graph. So the range is going to go from 1 to infinity. All right, and then now let's see what we have. Um, f is not continuous. on its domain because there is a hole in the graph at x equal to 1. Okay? Very good. All right, I know this one's a long one. <laughs> Well, um, you got to remember the first two chapters are, are review. So, um, so here we go. Let's look at this application. We're actually not going to graph this one. Um, I tried graphing it on this grid, and it really doesn't give us much information. It needs a different type of grid. So we'll skip the graph, and we'll just answer the questions based on the function. So short-term parking, no more than 24 hours. Uh, fee in dollars at O'Hare International Airport. Um, the X represents the number of hours parked, and it can be modeled by this function right here. So it, we're, we're called on to answer these questions. What is the fee for parking in the short-term parking garage for 2 hours, 7 hours, 15 hours, and then 8 hours and 24 minutes? So two hours basically means we're going to be evaluating capital F at x is 2. So here, you got to figure out which one, which one it's going to behave like. So do you see this one, this one here includes x equal to 2. So we're going to have an output of 4 when we evaluate that function at 2. So capital F at 2 is equal to 4. So the answer to that question is $4. OK, so far? Good. All right, 7 hours. 7 hours, that would make x is 7. So do you see it's going to behave? This, is, this here includes x equal to 7, and then we got to figure out that expression. So 5 times the greatest integer of x plus 1, and then increase that result by 2. So let's do it. So capital F at 7 is 5 times the greatest integer function at 7 plus 1, and then increase by 2. So that's going to be 5 times greatest integer function of 8, and then increase by 2, which will be the greatest integer we've attained is, good, 8. So at the end of the day, we will get 42. So the cost for just 7 hours, that's crazy, isn't it, is 42 bucks. Okay, now 15 hours. You see that this includes, this uh, interval includes x equal to 15. So that one's another easy one. We're just going to get 51. So capital F at 15 equals 51. So we'd be paying $51. Now, 8 hours and 24 minutes is equivalent to 8 and 24 sixtieths, which ends up being 8.4 hours. So capital F at 8.4, let's see what it's, which one, which interval, includes x is 7 and x is 8.4 in that interval because it goes up until 9. So we'll be doing that crazy one again. So f at 8.4 will be 5 times the greatest integer function of 8.4 plus 1 plus 2, which will be 5 times the greatest integer function of 9.4 increased by 2 
Well, the greatest integer you've attained there is just 9. You haven't gotten to 10 yet. So we'd get 47 bucks. All right? And that's it. We have just completed section uh, 2.4. Thank you for your patience. I know it was a, uh, a long one. So just so you don't get confused, I'm just going to say skip the graph. All right. Have a great day. Bye.